Hypertension or high blood pressure is not to be taken lightly because it can increase our risks for a heart attack, strokes, um, arterial aneurysms, peripheral artery disease, and it can even increase our risk for chronic kidney disease, and it can shorten our life expectancy. And people don't like to take the medications for it. You know, it makes them feel tired and they have to urinate frequently. A lot of side effects. You're right. Now there's a new study that just came out that shows that something as simple as essential oils can make a difference in lowering our blood pressure. Yeah, it's really interesting that something that simple can do that. Yet, when you look at the effect that it has on blood pressure in this particular study, it really didn't show that much of a change. You're looking at two-point systolic and one-point diastolic. And that's a change, and it's worthwhile. And, you know, the oils smell good, so why not? And they relax you. They do relax. And maybe that's the main way that they work, because relaxation is something that is almost the opposite of hypertension. You know, hyper means super, <laughs> and tension is too much stress. And a lot of the time we're over-diagnosing hypertension in a big sort of way in our offices uh, because when people come in, you know, they're, you're often late, uh, they're coming into a cold room, they're worried about a problem, they're stressed out, their cortisol levels go up, and what do you expect? Their blood pressure is going to go up a little too. In fact, if it didn't, sometimes I'd be a little bit worried because it's, you should be able to have that kind of a, adrenaline response that, that raises your blood pressure a little bit. Well, the way that they were recommending using the oils was like... Um, uh, with candles like beeswax uh -huh. scented candles uh -huh. and also an infuser or ultrasonic ionizers uh -huh. but the thing about it is that they said up to an hour now what happens if it's over an hour well you think your blood pressure goes up it goes the other way in about the same amount so, so we're not looking is, at a major thing here yeah but, but if just, you're working in a spa and you're smelling them all day long might that be might bad be for a you. problem right it depends i think on what it does to you I think we need more studies if we're going to take this real seriously as an approach to try. But, I mean, what what harm can come from doing a little bit of an essential oil a couple times a day? Well, the one that they did the study on was bergamot. Uh -huh. But, you know, there are other ones. Everybody knows about lavender. Uh -huh. And they know about um, chamomile. And then there's yang yang and, and uh, oh, frankincense. There are and hundreds of them. Geranium and spruce and sage and majorum and right. <laughs> a lot of them. Right. Neroli oil. <laughs> I think what we're looking at is how to relax. And there are a lot of ways to relax. In fact, those are the main, uh, mainstays uh, of how I approach people who come in with hypertension, Vicki. Well, speaking of a spa, how about massage? Massage is a great way to relax. Mm -hmm. I think that's, that's super. Exercise is even better. When you exercise hard, it's like blowing all the carbon out of your cylinders when you get the car to go a little bit fast. Or meditation or hypnotherapy. Qigong. Qigong's another good way to do it, sure, and that's a, a, quite a bit more powerful than an essential oil. But all these things add up, and so what doesn't seem to be a huge factor in just using something like an essential oil, when it adds to the other things you can do, it may just be what you need to relax enough that your blood pressure drops. Well, I think it's good for people to know that there are other things that they can try besides taking drugs. Oh, for sure. And we've talked many times before about how powerful exercise is. Mm -hmm. But there are certain foods in the diet and so forth, too, that are good at reducing blood pressure, sure. like celery, for example. Sure. I guess if you made celery juice, you'd get enough of it that way. <laughs> That'd be a, a way to get plenty of it, for sure. And garlic does, and, and a lot of other foods that are low in salt. And sea salt, you know, is much better salt to use than regular table salt, which is just sodium chloride. Actually, that's kind of toxic. But anything to relax you, you know, laughter and heart math uh, and whatever can take you into the present tense. And energy work and homeopathy. Yep. Music and art and rituals and dance and movement and sports and prayer. All these things are powerful ways to go. Even a sweat lodge will help you to get into the moment and in a very powerful way. So I think the treatment that we're talking about here is one where we get into what I call the zone of life. And what do I mean by that? Basically, that we're getting to a place where we're in the moment, and that's where the action is. We get distracted by worrying about what's going to happen in the future or what has happened in the past that's not okay with us. And where we need to be is right in the, in the moment, right in the present tense. That's where the zone of life is. That's what we're given. Being present, which is what meditation is all about. A lot of these things we're talking about, even sports. For me, 
I'm in the zone of life when I'm playing tennis sometimes. If I'm just there watching the ball and seeing what happens and dancing with my opponent or my partner is really what I like to say. So you're not doing, you're not thinking about anything else that's going to stress no. you because you're just, well, maybe the ball might fo stress you. Well, it, it <laughs> could. If it goes in the wrong well, if you place. get advanced enough, I think you get so that it becomes a dance and an art form. And it's a, it's a very relaxing thing when it's going well. Plus, you get the benefits of exercise and detoxification. So when we look at hypertension, there are lots of ways to deal with it. Overdiagnosis is what concerns me the most, even though most of the uh, articles that are coming into the mainstream from our cardiologists and people who are hypertension experts are really trying to say that uh, it's we need to do more to look at, at bringing it down and often using drugs. I use I probably write a prescription for a drug once or twice a week because I think lifestyles are most important way to treat most things. Most doctors probably do several a day. Oh, almost every patient that comes in. So you can practice the, the way that you feel the most comfortable. If you've got hypertension, it's important to get baseline levels to be sure you get an average and to look at the other target organs to make sure that they're not affected. So for example, an EKG could tell you if the heart is under stress. There are lots of ways to do that. So yes, essential oils are a good start. And all these other approaches that take us into the zone of life are very effective treatments for hypertension.